Hello, everyone. This is Bhargav Reddy, Regional Operations Director for APAC Assistance, joining you from Bangalore. Today, we'll be doing an Asia-Pacific risk briefing, starting with East Asia-Pacific. We have with us Paul Kellia, the Director of APAC Assistance, joining us from Singapore. To start off with, we have three issues in East Asia Pacific, which we have assessed today. First of which is Papua New Guinea, uh, a, a criminal, a clash between criminal gangs in Alto, uh, Alotoba. Uh, Paul, would you like to elaborate on this? Yeah, the, look, the clash in Alotau, it's pronounced Bargov, is it's a town or residential area on the north coast of Milne Bay in PNG. It's about an hour's flight from Port Moore was to be to the east on the same island. Milton Bay is a very big island in the south um, east corner. Basically, there's like everywhere in PNG, there's large criminal gangs. Um, there, were, there was a obviously a clash. The police stated that they didn't exchange gunfire, but this is a hang up from an incident a couple of months ago. We've got no uh, specific advice for Alatau because people operating in Alatau know that these clashes can happen with little or no warning like they can anywhere in PNG, obviously, especially in Port Moresby in the southern and central highlands. But this goes to uh, show that even the remote areas on the coastal fringes can also get out of control. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a quick summary of the situation in Alatel. Well, we also have another shooting, it seems, in Indonesia. One person was killed uh, in an attack by TNI in Papua, Indonesia. Would you like to elaborate on that as well? Yeah, sure, Baga. Look, there was basically a, an accident involving a soldier that ran in and hurt some local Papuans in Jayapura. Jayapura is a city on the north coast on the border between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia in the province of Papua. Jayapura is a big city, roughly a million people. Um, soldiers hit the Papuans. The, the Papuans held the motorbike to basically say that the government needs to take accountability for the soldiers' actions. Soldiers returned with 50-odd people and like they normally do with ill discipline and too much oppression and a belief that they're above the law and don't have to respect the Indigenous people. Obviously, with what's happening in Papua, particularly with the declaration of war against Freeport Mine and the declaration of war against the Intanjaya government, which is the area just immediately inland from the Freeport Mine, this is just another of literally hundreds of fatal incidents that have occurred in Papua over the last couple of decades. Obviously, people think if they have a couple of quiet years, then it's all good or quiet months. But the last you know, three months, we've certainly seen a, quite a elevation of incidents so people operating anywhere in Papua and West Papua which are the two most eastern provinces of Indonesia and basically with the large Melanesian populations and the history of oppression and wealth being taken from oil gas and mining and some fairly large incidents in the history of Papua it's a very insecure environment at the moment and getting more so there's only so long you can treat people with oppression and greed before it comes back on you and if you're not open and honest especially with Melanesians uh, you, you seep you, you reap what you sow go ahead Bhargav. have anything else you want me to cover off on well, Thailand continues to be in focus. There seems to be no de-escalation in sight. Uh, can you uh, can you give your insights on the protests which are ongoing in Bangkok as we speak? Yeah, look, I mean, obviously Thailand's going through a very, very unique time. It's uh, You have to go back to 1932 since the last time the royal family were openly challenged. Obviously, you've got pro-democracy movement trying to unseed the existing government, so Prayut's uh, original um, military intervention led to power where he basically fabricated new political parties to lessen the power of um, Taksin and his supporters. Where it's very different this time is they're actually calling for reform of the monarchy and the pro-democracy movement obviously got hit up with water cannons yesterday trying to go to the Grand Palace to deliver some... Uh, mock up post boxes. But this is going to be a prolonged situation in Thailand. Obviously, without the calming influence of the late king and General Prem, both of whom died in the last couple of years, 
the new monarchs trying to find his feet and the pro-democracy movements trying to grow power and push for reform. And they've also alienated themselves from large chunks of society where there is a massive respect for the monarch as an institution. So we, we expect this elevated risk environment to continue whilst the multinationals and Westerners are not the target. People need to avoid and be cognizant of the disruptions to transport, both road transport, but also the sky train and, and also the subway, because ultimately the democracy movement is trying to disrupt to get its voice heard. So people need to be very, very aware of the disruptions. And whilst they're not targeted directly, there is going to be um, both a proximity danger in any demonstrations, so avoid that. But there's also chance of long-term supply chain disruption, more importantly, disruption, people getting to and from work. So companies need to really look into their policies for work from home and uh, look at alternate work locations for critical meetings. So have zonal uh, meeting locations identified in the various um, geographical sectors of Bangkok, Baga. Well, thank you very much for the elaboration of major issues in East Asia Pacific, Paul. Uh, clients can uh, can actually ask us for such detailed assessments on issues that concern them. To reach us and inquire more about our membership programs, please contact us at info at apacassistance.com. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.